But the core question is whether what you saw in those few moments of the debate and over much of the arc of that 90 minute debate uh, was someone having a difficult night or someone who is no longer up to the job. So with all due respect, um, it is not. It is not honest to say that this is just one night. Oh, that wasn't supposed to happen. CNN, the most trusted source in White House propaganda, wasn't actually supposed to push back with, um, um, oh yeah, facts. But it happened, baby. Uh, let's get ready to rumble! You can't handle the truth! Hi, I'm Pastor Marty. Welcome to the Afternoon Drive. Ah, it's a good day. Please make sure that you are subscribed to the channel. Once you are, smack the bell, click the word all. Then it give you notification of my rants, my ravings, and of course, my undeniably flawless reasonings. Please like and share this video. It's the only way that we can get the word out that we're here. Thank you so much for watching and being a part of the Afternoon Drive. The New York Times is reporting today that Joe Biden is hunkered down and weighing out whether or not he should step aside. This according to the New York Times talking to one of his advisors. Immediately when that headline ran, the White House came out and said, there is absolutely nothing to that. Joe Biden isn't going anywhere. I've been telling you, he's not. Jill Biden is in charge of all this. Other media pundits are now catching up to this. I know Bill O'Reilly's trying to take a victory lap on this, as are other few. Uh, I've been on this for months telling you that this is Jill Biden driving this. Jill Biden hates Barack, Miss Obama, and Michelle and feels like that, you know, Joe was in their shadow when in actuality, you know, she considers him the brains behind all, you know, you know th these people are so narcissistic and so entitled. And Queen Jill doesn't want to give up living the lifestyle at the White House. She just, she doesn't want to let it go. And she's willing to sacrifice her husband, which is fine because he's willing to sacrifice his son. I mean, these people are all vile to one another within the family. I mean, it's an interesting family dynamic. Um, but that all said, so you've got the Democrats, they're scrambling now. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? Because the jig is up. People see this. There's no more spinning this as, quote, deep fake videos carefully edited. The American people at 72% have said this man is not mentally fit or capable of being the president. And the media can't cover this up anymore. And the reason they can't cover it up, it's not just because certain powers within the Democratic Party have told them, go for it. But even the media are narcissistic, they are self-absorbed, and they were willing to carry Biden's water while it benefited them. They got access to the White House, they had, you know, uh, an inline to, to information, et cetera, et cetera. They didn't have to actually do any, what's the word I want? Oh yeah, journalism. They just had to wait to be handed the talking points, the propaganda points every day, and then go out and sit in front of the camera do it and earn their million dollar salaries and live in their nice homes and be completely unaffected by Bidenomics. Well, now that the American people in mass have turned against this president and see what's happening, well, these journalists at this point, they're kind of like, Joe, you're on your own. We have to do a little CYA of us now because we can't have people completely Stop watching us. I mean, CNN is down to less than a half a million viewers a night. Nobody's buying newspapers anymore. And, you know, the gray lady, the New York Times, wants to be considered the paper of record. Well, you know, they are quickly being swept into the dustbin of history. Alternative media, online media is taking over. That all said, so the covering up for Joe Biden and his mental incompetence 
is done, it's over. And the White House doesn't know what to do. Take a look at Kamala Camilla thinks she's a hottie Harris. She gets rather hissy with Anderson Cooper when he actually begins to press her. CNN's John King has described a panic inside the Democratic Party right now because of President Biden's performance in tonight's debate. He's been hearing from Democratic lawmakers and others around the country. Um, some within your own party are, are wondering if President Biden should even step aside. What do you say to that? Listen, first of all, what we saw tonight is the president making a very clear contrast with Donald Trump on all of the issues that matter to the American people. Oh, yes, it's it's very clear. It's very clear that Joe Biden, mentally speaking, is completely gone. And just three years ago, we commemorated the two-year anniversary of Dobbs, wherein women across our country have been denied emergency health care, well, have all that suffered may be true. miscarriages all that to may the be point true. that... But the but president of the United States was important. not able to, to put, make that case to Donald Trump on the stage tonight. I mean, you debated against then-Vice President Trump, uh, excuse me, Vice President Biden, four years ago, and... He was a very different person on the stage four years ago when, when you debated him. You must, I mean, that, that's certainly true, is it not? Anderson, the point has to be performance in terms of what a president does. So I'm not going to spend all night with you talking about the last 90 minutes well, when I've been watching the last three and a half years of performance. Right. But this was a debate that your campaign wanted. You pushed for this debate at this moment. Uh, obviously, I mean, you can't honestly say, I mean, can you say that you are not concerned at all having watched the president's performance tonight? It was a slow start. That's obvious to everyone. I'm not going to debate that point. Sell crazy someplace else. We're all stocked up here. You know, she's not going to focus on 90 minutes. She's going to focus on the accomplishment of these last three and a half years. What accomplishments? Seriously, what accomplishments? The never-ending mandates, the insulting of the American people, the, the Gestapo-like speeches that he gave in front of the right chancellery with the, the dark lighting behind him and the soldier standing guard behind him when he talked about MAGA people. MAGA people. What what accomplishments when he said that that the, the portion of the country that would not take love potion number nine was killing the rest of the country? What accomplishments? The accomplishments where uh, people lost their jobs over not taking the magic elixir because apparently uh, my body, my choice doesn't apply when the government steps in and says, yes, you will, and you will prove it. If you do not have papers, you cannot have access to this restaurant, to this venue. Where are your papers? What, what accomplishments? Gas prices are up. Groceries are way up. Mortgages have put people in a place they can't buy houses, which part of that is, you know, part of the, you know, the the Schwab World Economic Forum, you know, you don't need to own anything. That's a burden on you. Just rent from us. Crime is down. Crime is down. Oh, crime is down. Crime is down because in blue cities, they've stopped arresting criminals. Or they have, you know, this revolving door where, you know, if it's under $1,000, the police aren't going to bother with it. We watch the videos even here on YouTube of these mass shoplifters and looters who just walk into a store, empty it out, and the security guards just stand there and let it happen. The cop on the street corner outside watches them leave, does nothing. You know why? Because it's pointless. DAs are more interested in going after Donald Trump than after going after criminals. So the only reason crime is down, nothing's, there's nobody being arrested. So what are his accomplishments? He certainly hasn't secured the border. The economy is in the absolute tank. It may be benefiting, you know, it's benefiting the people that, that Joe Biden constantly says are Trump's friends and, and they're the villains, but in actuality, they're in Joe's back pocket. Uh, yeah, the millionaires and billionaires, the donor class, who keep giving to Joe Biden against their own self-interest.
They're doing great. You know who's doing great in this economy? All the donors that financially supported Biden. He's paying them back. You know, kind of like Ukraine is, you know, being paid back by Biden for the grift that Hunter secured and the little family business over there. And that's why Ukraine has been able to cash that in for billions that's not going to win a war. It's going to fund their own oligarchy over there and their lifestyles. So what accomplishments exactly, Kamala? CNN wasn't supposed to do this. They weren't supposed to actually give her real questions. They were supposed to let her go out there and run cover for the president. And Anderson Cooper was supposed to sit there and nod his head and agree. And he pushed back. Somebody else who's been caught in the crossfire is Jake Tapper. Jake Tapper was one of the debate moderators, and he's getting it from the left over, why didn't you push back on Trump's lies? You know, it's not the moderator's job to interject and be fact checker. Somebody might want to tell Chris Wallace that. That's why he doesn't get the gig anymore. It's not, it's not a moderator's job to do that. Moderator's job is to ask a question, let the candidate say whatever they're going to say, and if it's bull hawk, it's up to his opponent to call him out and say that's bull hawk and explain why. That's it. So Chris Coons went on with Jake Tapper, and he is the co-campaign chair, and he wanted to explain that Biden had a bad night, but a bad night is not the defining moment of his presidency. And of all people, Jake Tapper said, no, 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 no. But the core question is whether what you saw in those few moments of the debate and over much of the arc of that 90 minute debate uh, was someone having a difficult night or someone who is no longer up to the job. So with all due respect, um, it is not. It is not honest to say that this is just one night. I mean, Jake Tapper is actually showing authenticity here. He's looking at this guy like, listen to me. I was in that debate room. I was asking the questions. I know what I saw. Now, what he didn't say is, I even jumped in there a couple times and helped your boss by quickly ending the, that question and moving to something else. I've done all I can do for your boss. You have continually fed us this story. We have carried this water. We're not doing it anymore. So Jake Tapper leans in a little harder and he goes right at Mr. Coons. Because you reject the notion that there's actually anything going on beyond just a bad night or a bad moment here or there, let me just ask you, do you, do you truly think that President Biden is the strongest candidate to take on Donald Trump in November? I think Joe Biden, two things, is the strongest, most accomplished president we've had in my lifetime. Not the question. That he's been counted out over and over and over. And he can go to the stage and say, here's my record. Joe Biden has the strongest record. We have the all-time high in the stock market, all-time low in unemployment. We have crime going down. We have investments in manufacturing going up. You know, we are I, headed in a strong direction. And he's he could, got a great platform to run for re-election. He is not the only Democrat who can run for president. That's not what I'm saying. Yeah, but, but he has uh, the strongest record to run on. This, I, I mean, he has given fewer press conferences, fewer interviews than any president in modern history, uh, including the previous one, who's now running for re-election. And, you know, this could all be and this the previous one told more lies per sentence than any candidate has ever this told on is, a debate stage. The, yeah, the, uh, this, this is not the discussion that we're having. We could certainly, you know, have that conversation. I certainly didn't particularly care for it when President Biden said no U.S. service members uh, had been killed in the previous four years. But but moving on from things that were said that were not true. Wow. Good for Jake. Well, if you're going to talk about lies, what about Biden lying and saying that no American servicemen died on his watch? I, I mean, it's not a great comeback, but it's it's more than you would have heard in 2020. 
So let's, let's talk about this because nobody's really addressing this, and this is starting to drive me nuts now. We, we played all the, the, the Biden sound clips from the debate ad nauseum, but the, the, the continual go-to line for Democrats defending Biden and Democrats you know, wanting to you know, continue to try to sway voters is that Trump lied. He lied. Okay, about what? I want a list. He lied 34 times in the first 10 minutes. What were they? What were the lies? Let's, let's talk about them. Does he lie about the jobs? We had the best job growth under Donald Trump. Everybody knows it. It's why you're losing the Hispanic and black vote. Black, young, black Americans know they had it financially better under Donald Trump and they had jobs and jobs were coming back to the inner city and Donald Trump had a team in place and he was trying to bring revitalization to black neighborhoods and black people know it and they're out there defending Donald Trump's record on jobs. The jobs that Joe Obama Biden wants to take credit for, they're not his to take credit for. People going back to work after lunatic Democrat governors lifted mandates and said people could finally leave their homes is not job creation. It's just simply people going back to work. And while the Democrat Party is kind of wrestling with who to replace old Joe with, the name Gretchen Whitmer keeps being floated out there. Gretchen, you know, who faked her own kidnapping. I want to say something there, but it, it involves a, a particular winter date on the sixth day, but I don't want another vacation from what I do here. So, but you know, the, the team that helped facilitate the so-called kidnapping of Gretchen Whitmer, which again, the whole thing was entrapment. Gretchen Whitmer, who arrested people in her own state if they were found outside in their own backyard during lockdown. Inside means inside. It conjures up images in China when the police were literally padlocking people and, and, and barricading doors of apartments and houses in China so that people could not, who were on the inside, get on the outside. Gretchen Whitmer was doing that in Michigan. I was living in Ohio at the time. I was literally a half an hour from the Michigan border, and I can tell you that happened. People would answer their door and there'd be a police official there or a city official there handing them a citation. You planted flowers out here. Yeah. You were outside your house. People had their gardens dug up by city officials because they were out of their house during the pandemic. That's the Democrats. That's their job creation. And that's fact. That's not a lie. The best economy this country had was under Donald Trump. That's not a lie. That's fact. The only one benefiting from the Biden economy right now are illegals. Him saying that they're getting welfare is a lie. No, it's not. If they come here with nothing, they paid nothing into the system, yet they're given housing, they're given meals, they're given health care, they are being taken care of, they are even being given debit cards in New York City to go buy stuff. That's welfare. Now, you may call it something else so that you can call Donald Trump a liar for saying it's welfare, but it's not if the government is giving it to him, it's welfare, period. The border? Is Biden really going to say the border's done? He got fact-checked in real time by the Border Patrol agencies who said we've never endorsed his plan or him. He's a liar. Oh, I thought Joe Biden was was the guy up there who was Mr. Integrity, Mr. Law. Yes, Mr. Integrity. The guy who was told by the Supreme Court he cannot pay student loans, and he has thumbed his nose at the Supreme Court, and he's doing it anyway. Buying votes. Yes, Mr. Integrity. The guy who looked over at Donald Trump and said that he had the morals of an alley cat because he was having an affair with a porn star while his wife was pregnant. Donald Trump has denied that affair multiple times with Stormy Daniels. 
And again, paying her money to shut up and go away. Famous people, politicians, they do that every day. Not because there's validity to their case, it's because they don't want the scandal and they don't want the, the, their, their time being consumed with that. But being lectured to on his morality by Joe Biden, who showered with his daughter. There's a woman living out of the country now because she alleges sexual assault from Joe Biden. So yes, please tell us about this man. He's going to, you know, Kamala Harris. He's the, he's the only one that's standing up really for women's rights, the most important right abortion. That is a part of me that wants to say really badly, well, you, you people, if you can't kill them in the womb, you can't wait to rape them when they get out of the womb and turn them over to pedophiles and child molesters and drag queens and s libraries and sexualize, you know, second graders with, with LBGTQ-sponsored materials that are graphic and pornographic and sexualizing children at the age of six. These people are twisted and demented. But the truth is this, not just Joe Biden, but Barack Obama, Bill Clinton. There have been other Democratic presidents who had majorities in the Congress and in the Senate who could have codified Roe versus Wade anytime they wanted to. They didn't want to. The Supreme Court did not outlaw abortion. What the Supreme Court did was said, there is no federal law that allows for abortion. And so because the federal government has not said, yes, abortion is legal in all 50 states, then we have to kick this back to the states. Each state gets to decide. So when Joe Biden lied and like a snake oil salesman said, this would be like kicking civil rights back to individual states. That's why there's a national civil rights law. The federal government created a law. At the time of Roe versus Wade, even Democratic lawmakers said, this is only temporary because this isn't really based on law. The Supreme Court basically legislated from the bench, but it's not actual law. We need to create a law that tells women they can do this. And Shazam, Batman, in 50 years, they just haven't gotten around to it. You know why? Because they love to dangle it over voters' heads to scare them that a guy like Trump is going to take it away and they can raise money on it and scare people into voting for them. When in reality, they haven't voted to do a thing to protect it. That's the truth. What lies of Trump? About the lies of Biden? Hunter? The laptop? It was all malarkey. It was all Russian disinformation. Now we find out it's true that Hunter was not only getting money from Ukraine, but he was sharing it with El Papa. I would call that the selling of influence, a threat to national security. I realize he learned how to do it from the Clintons, but... And then every story out of this guy's mouth, his entire political career has been a lie. A lie. Joe Biden is the liar. Shall we take a little stroll down memory lane? Democratic presidential candidate Joseph Biden today faces a controversy. Three weeks ago at a debate at the Iowa State Fair, he used phrases identical to those delivered by British Labor Party leader Neil Kinnock. Biden seemed to be claiming Kinnock's vision and life as his own. Why is it that my wife is sitting out there in the audience is the first in her family to ever go to college? Why is Gladys the first? woman in her family in a thousand generations to be able to get the university. My ancestors who worked in the coal mines in northeast Pennsylvania and come up after 12 hours and play football. Eight hours underground and then come up and play football. It's because they didn't have a platform upon which to stand. There was no platform upon which they could stand. The notion that every thought or notion or idea you'd have to go back and find and attribute to someone I think is quite frankly, uh, ludicrous. The problem here is that Senator Biden told his audience he'd just been thinking about these things and he failed to give any credit at all to his famous British speechwriter. You know, I was thinking on the way over here. What? 
Now, that's a little too much, because as you point out, what's behind the words? What's there? And a lot of people, a rap on Biden has always been, it's just a surface. I should have said, to paraphrase Neil Kinnock, it's the only time I didn't in all the times I've ever used it. But CBS News found a tape of a second instance. It reappeared in the New York Times with a new charge, that Biden had appropriated a famous litany from the late Robert Kennedy about what the gross national product cannot measure. It cannot measure the health of our children. The health of our children. The quality of our education. The quality of their education. The joy of their play. Or the joy of their play. Biden gave Kennedy no credit. He has also quoted or paraphrased John Kennedy, Hubert Humphrey, and British Labor Party leader Neil Kinnock, all without credit. Joseph Biden admitted today that he committed plagiarism when he was in law school. He said it was a mistake, but that it was unintentional. He quoted five pages of someone else's work without proper citation. I've done some dumb things, and I'll do dumb things again. He was given an F. So ladies and gentlemen, I've been dumb. To the political community in Washington, it all seems of a piece. Plagiarism at law school, plagiarism on the stump. The great communicator. Strike that. The great imitator. You don't steal verbatim, uh, or when you do, as he did 99% of the time, you give credit. Biden's critics say he sells himself as a man whose words and visions can inspire a new generation in politics. But if the thoughts, phrases, and visions really belong to others, it's a form of false advertising. Is it a wise idea, though, to take something that personal, anyway, from another politician and try and appropriate it to your own campaign? I think it was a stupid thing to uh, appropriate uh, material that was really very personal that was someone else's. Most people didn't know who he was, you know, Joe Biden, Biden, and now they're going to say, oh, yeah, he's the guy who plagiarized. That's a lot of people. First. Politically, that's <laughs> devastating. These clips are devastating. He looks like a Joe Biden wind-up doll with somebody else's words coming out. If they are going to do things that are stupid as well as immoral, then they're probably too dumb to have the job of president. Voters are going to have to decide whether he was dishonest or dumb. Senator Joseph Biden may have more explaining to do. The new questions stem from With taped remarks of, of Biden States. during an April campaign appearance in New Hampshire. I went to law school on a full academic scholarship, the only one in my, in my class uh, to have a full academic scholarship. Went back to law school and in fact ended up in the top half of my class. I was the outstanding student in the political science department at the end of my year. I graduated with three degrees from undergraduate school and 165 credits, only 123 credits. Biden now concedes he did not graduate in the top half of his law school class that he does not have three degrees from college, and that he was not named outstanding political science student in college. Newsweek says Biden actually went to school on a half scholarship, ended up near the bottom of his class, and won only one degree, not three. Joe Biden ranked 76th in a class of 85 at the University of Syracuse Law School. I mean, this guy comes off this whole thing as a flyweight. Now Biden says Newsweek is right. His memory had failed him. And I'd be delighted to sit down and compare my IQ to yours if you'd like, Frank. Joe Biden was victimized by the truth. Bye-bye, Biden. He may not know it yet, but I think this is very diff going to be very difficult for him to recover. Is Joe Biden dead meat, yes or no? I think so. Bob? He's in terminal condition. Terminal? Eleanor? Yes, unless he comes in third in Iowa. Morton? <laughs> Dying. Hell, I might be president now if it weren't for the fact I said my, uh, I had an uncle who was a coal miner. Turned out I didn't have anybody in the coal mines, you know what I mean? Really? I tried that crap, you know, about, you know. <laughs> it didn't work. I'm from Scranton, Pennsylvania. I think there had to be a coal miner somewhere in the family. <laughs> Nothing, huh? Nothing. The coal, it was an engineer. I mean... I swear to God, when he left Scranton, when coal died, my dad was not a... Was he was a salesperson. He wasn't a coal miner. My great grandpa was. And let's not forget the biggest lie of all that Joe Biden and his people and the media and the Democrats who told us Dianne Feinstein was fine even though she had signed power of attorney for all of her life decisions over to her daughter, she was allowed to sit in the Senate and vote. Biggest lie of all. Joe Biden is fine. He's not suffering from dementia. Lie.